we're going to sit and listen to him teach about First Nephi chapter 7. So, Brother Richard, it's all you there, baby. Thanks. Morning, everyone. Good to, hear, to be here. So I, I used to be in the Sunnyside and Sandpoint Ward. I don't know uh, if any of you remember me or my wife. Um, I married, uh, does anyone know John Marks, uh, the Bishop of the Priest River Ward? Yeah, I married, I married his daughter. So, um, And then we lived in Sunnyside Ward and Sandpoint Ward for a period of time, and now we live in the Western Ward. So we're kind of all You're over everywhere. Ward. I know, we're everywhere. And uh, so I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm just going to teach you today a little bit about 1st Nephi 7. But I want to know, um, who can give me a recap, what have you learned this week about the Book of Mormon? Where are you at? What have you, who can give me a really quick recap? So far Nephi has gone to get the plates. All right. Did they start in the wilderness? No, they left. They left. They're going and to go and play Laban. That's right. Okay, so now they're back at the tent with with Lehi, right? And Sariah, their mom. So I drew here a map to try to kind of to try to show you the distance. Because I, I never really thought about this, but then when I started thinking about that, wow, it wasn't an easy journey. So we got Jerusalem where Nephi and Lehi were, and then they traveled to the Valley of Lemuel. Does anyone have any idea how long that would take? This was a what? So the travel from here to there is about 180 miles. So if you were to walk from Sandpoint to Missoula, it's about 180 miles. Or from Sandpoint to Moses Lake, if you know where that is. So you can imagine doing that. But to try to put that into more of a perspective for our day, how many of you like road trips, being in the car? Yeah, yeah. Not particularly. Okay, can you imagine being in the car traveling for 12 days? So, I know, that's what I was going to I like, oh, no way. So if you, were to, if you were to start in California and go to every state capital in the 48 states here, excluding Alaska and Hawaii, if you were to go to every state capital and end up in Maine, it would take 12 days if you were to stop for sleeping every night and stopping to eat. 12 days in the car to go from California, every state capital, to Maine. Okay, so imagine doing that. You finally get to Maine and you're like, oh, I'm so excited, we finally made it. And then your dad says, hey, you know what? I forgot my scriptures in California. <laughs> Do you mind going back? And you have to go to every state capital going back too. Oh. <laughs> But, a new one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you ever wonder why Laman and Lemuel murmured? I mean, if you think about traveling 12 days, so so Nephi gets back in the car with his brothers. They go to every state capital. They go back to California. They get the scriptures. Then they get back in the car. They travel to every state capital, going back to Maine. And they go, oh, phew, we made it. Now we're done. We got the scriptures. We're done. We're good. But now we're in chapter 7. So, if you read in chapter 7, it starts out with uh, Lehi. He's reading the prophecies of the scriptures. You know, they got the brass plates now, and he's reading. And he starts prophesying about his own family, his posterity. And I can just imagine Lehi. He's probably reading from the brass plates like this, and he's like, you know, I prophesy that my children will have great prosperity. We're not going to have a mighty nation. And then he's, then he's just stopped and like, hmm, wait a minute. My, my boys aren't married. How's that going to work? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you know, so. so then, so then the Lord says, you know what, Lehi, you can't keep going without wives. So tell your boys, get back in the car, take a van this time, go to every state capital, and go back to California. Pick up some wives, or a family. Or a family. <laughs> or a family with a lot of, a lot of sisters. <laughs> Get back in the van, go to every state capital, and come back. Pretty easy, right? 
Do you ever wonder why Lehman would let me murmur? If it was me, I would. In fact, I know I would. When I was, um, I, I used to live in Nebraska. Has anyone ever been to Nebraska? Who's been to Nebraska? Well, if you ever driven through it, everyone hates driving through it. It's completely flat. It's like living on the ocean. Completely flat. And uh, so, I was at a time in my life where I went through a hard experience. I thought, you know, I want something new. I want to do something new. I want to be in a new area. And so, I said, well, I want to go to Idaho. I've never been to Idaho. I heard it's a great, it's a great state. So I got in my car with my brother and my sister, and we drove to Idaho. And we started in southern Idaho. We've never been to Idaho before. We're like, well, let's start in southern Idaho. We got to Boise, and we're like, well, this doesn't feel right. Let's let's just keep driving. And so we kept going north. And we it's like, this still doesn't, still doesn't feel right. So we kept going north. We hit Coeur d'Alene and thought, wow, this is awesome. Idaho is amazing. And so I started planning, like, I'm going to I'm gonna find a job, going to get a place to stay. I'm going to settle down here in Coeur d'Alene. And, but we kept going north, hit Sandpoint, thought, oh, I love Sandpoint. I'm going to find a job, going to find a place to live. This is where I'm going to live forever. And then we kept going north, and we went to Bonner's Ferry. And I, and I actually applied for a job up there. And when I did my interview, uh, right after the interview, I got the distinct impression from the Holy Ghost, and my parent, and my brother and my sister did, the, the impression was, go home. Now go home, turn around and go back home. And for me, that was hard. I thought, wait a minute, I was prompted by the Spirit to come to Idaho, find where to live, and now you're just gonna tell me to go back home? And like Laban and Lemmy, I wish I could have been like a Nephi and said, okay, you want me to go back? I'll go back, no problem. But it was hard. I went back and I murmured. I was angry the whole way home. But little did I know the plan that God had for me. There was something else I needed to do at home before I came to Idaho. And so I hope when we think about Laban and Lemmy murmuring all the time, we don't do it too harshly. Try to imagine yourself, if you had to get in the car and travel 12 days, and then 12 days back, and then 12 days again, and then 12 days back, it would get hard. And they had to travel through a desert. How many of you like the heat? So imagine traveling in the summer in the car without air conditioning, rolling down the windows, you know? I mean, it wasn't an easy trip. That's what I'm trying to portray here. It was not an easy trip for them. It wasn't just a two day, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get back. So let's read a little bit um, in here. So the mission of Nephi, or wait, let me ask you this question. This is something I was wondering when I was reading the scriptures. And honestly, I don't know the answer, so I want to ask, and please tell me your honest opinion. Lehi was up here, came down here, told his son to go back to his place, come back, then go back and get Ishmael's family. If God is all-knowing, why didn't God tell Lehi the very first time, you know what, you have to leave Jerusalem, go ahead and get the brass plate, get Ishmael's family, and then just go down there, just one trip, one time. Why do you think God had him do it, had Nephi and his brothers do it five times? How would you expand on that? How would that teach you patience? To question your faith? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, patience, trying to trust God, right, is, is a hard thing to do. Why else? Why would God have them do that five times rather than when they could have done it just once? Probably testing their faith testing their faith, right? You know, he's stripping them of their will. He's stripping them down to to trust him, to let go of what they had planned. And that's a hard thing to do. And sometimes it takes traveling, going against your will, stripped down to what God wants you to do. So, and every time they did it, God blessed them with something more. So they went and got the brass plate, and now God's going to bless them with wives. So, who can read for me 1 Nephi chapter 7, verse 1? Anybody? 
volunteers? No, please. Now I would that you might know that after my father and Nehemiah had made an end of prophesying concerning a seed that came to pass, the Lord spake unto him again, saying that it was not to eat him, Nehemiah, that he should take his family into the wilderness alone, but that his son should take his daughters to wife, that they might raise up seed unto the Lord and the Lord in the promise. All right. So now go back to Ishmael's family got to get wives so that you can have posterity and we can go to the promised land together. Now, I love in here that uh, Laban and Lemuel, if you notice, didn't complain this time. Did, you, did, you, did anyone catch that when they were reading? So when they had to go get the brass plates, they all complained. Well, we're going to have to get back in the car and go 12 days? No way. But then, he said, then Lehi says, I want to go back and get some wives. Oh, okay, I'm, I'll get in right now. I'm ready to go. Let's go. So they jumped in the car. They went back to California, going to every capital state. Went to Jerusalem, knocked on Ishmael's door. I can just imagine what that would be like. Can you imagine? So Nephi knocks on his door. Hi, Ishmael. My name is Nephi. Um, how would you like to pack up your things? Come and travel 12 days in the wilderness with us. It's pretty hot. And by the way, I'd like to marry your daughter. <laughs> That'd be kind of tough, wouldn't it? I don't know. We don't know if Nephi and Lehi knew Ishmael's family beforehand. We just know that uh, they were supposed to go there. And we were told here that Nephi and his brothers, Laman and Lemuel too, talked with the Spirit, and that Ishmael had a soft heart. Who can read verse 5 for me? Verse 5. Insomuch that they took their journey with us down into the wilderness, the tent of our fathers. Great. How many of you would do that? No. No, right? That Most makes likely. Sense. I would not like if my dad did that. Yeah. No. And you like, what are we doing? You know, I just think about that. That's a good point. Yep. Okay. How would you think if your dad said, hey, hey, we're packed up backpack full of things, the most precious things, and we're going to make a road trip? And you'll never see our house again. And you're gonna marry someone who's gonna <laughs> And here's your oh. future husband. <laughs> oh my gosh, I would not be excited. Thanks. Again, maybe they knew each other before, I don't know. I'm just so maybe it wasn't such a shock. But um, when I first moved to Idaho, when I finally got to Idaho, my parents bought 40 acres out here in Carrywood. And uh, my brother and I thought, you know, it'd be fun to live in the woods, have that woods experience. We bought a couple axes, we cut down some trees, built a cabin, and we lived in it all winter. Just off grid. We had to haul our own water, no electricity, and it was it was the best experience ever. But at the time I was dating my wife, and I can still remember the day I proposed to her and was, hi, um, I got a cabin, no running water, no electricity. Do you want to marry me? <laughs> and uh, Bless her heart, she said yes. And uh, we actually lived in that cabin for about four months after we got married. But, um, but it, was, it would be tough, wouldn't it? You have to leave everything, all the comforts of home, leave that and go trust that your father's doing the right thing, that you're going in the wilderness. So put yourself in that situation. That would be a tough thing to do. So they're traveling in the wilderness, they get about I don't know, let's say they get about halfway, they're five, four, five, eight days in the car. Everyone's starting to complain. Why are they complaining? What's going on? Who starts complaining? Probably the wives. Probably the wives. Not gonna lie. Especially they, they have kids, right? It doesn't mention kids, but they have kids. Stuff. Right, right. So the, the group kind of splits up into two. So who's on Nephi's side? Let's read. Um, actually, yeah, let's read the verse, let's read verse 7. Who can read verse 7? Someone in the back. Scott? Okay. That's the only name I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> verse 7? Yep. Okay. And it came to pass the, to pass in the, in the, which? And it came to pass in the, which? To go in. 
<laughs> and they would they they were desirous to e return it into the land of Jerusalem. Great. Right. Yeah. So this group splits up, don't they? They say, wait, I want to go back to my house. I want to go back to Jerusalem. So who what what are the teams now? Okay, we got a team of Nephi, we got a team of Lam Lemuel. Laman, Lemuel, Laman. Let's do Laman. So who's on the team of Nephi? Let's read read verse eight or read verse six to yourself and tell me who's on the side of Nephi. Okay, we got Sam, Ishmael, Ishmael's wife, and three daughters. And Lehi. And Lehi's not actually there. Lehi, Lehi is back in the valley, still here, waiting. And it, I didn't realize this, but who are we missing? You know, they picked up a passenger the last time. Huh? Oh, the Zoram. Didn't Zoram stay in Zoram? Zoram must have stayed with me with Lehi down here. He didn't go on this trip for some reason. At least it doesn't mention him. So that'd be kind of awkward, but you know, maybe <laughs> I didn't know them. I guess that would be. Yeah, yeah. maybe he didn't know them. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully he got a wife out of it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there were three wives. He did. In there were three Mormon. wives, right? How about Sam? Yeah. Yes. Sam's there. You have to mention Sam. <coughs> what? He needs to have one. Yeah, so we got three daughters. So, you know, one for Nephi, one for Sam, and maybe one for Zoram, right? So, uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Okay, who's, who's against him? Who's against Nephi? Laman and Lemuel. Laman and Lemuel, of course. Two of the daughters, which are probably Laman and Lemuel's future wives. And then two of the sons of Ekman. Two of the sons of Sam. So the two sons, it sounds like they were already married. So we got their wives, and they probably had kids. So for you to say, maybe the wives? Yeah, it was probably the wives and the kids. I mean, it was probably a hard trip if they had children. So it's kind of split 50 50, okay? But the instigators seem to be Laman and Lemuel. So Nephi, being Nephi, what does he do? He tries to tell them. Right. How many of you have younger siblings? How many of you have older siblings? Okay. <laughs> so for you that have older siblings, how would you feel if you had to go to one of your older siblings and tell them to repent? Oh. Would that be hard? <laughs> <I'm highly laughs> repent. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard, wouldn't it? You have to go to your old, older brother or sister and say, you know what, you're doing the wrong thing. You probably need to change. Change. And, no. And repent. Okay, good job. Now, wouldn't it be harder, what if one of your younger siblings came to you and told you to repent? Like, bend down on your knees. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. That's exactly, that's yeah. how I would respond. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. I have seven younger siblings. Oh. And, and so if, if any of them came to me and said, you know what, Joseph, you need to repent, you need to change, I know I'd have a tough time with that. I'd have a much easier time being the younger one trying to tell my older ones what to do. Or like, can you be like, God said, "Give little of you to be like." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see <laughs> Exactly, and that's He's exactly. Our main dominant. That's exactly <laughs> how Laman and Lemuel responded, isn't it? They said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You're our younger brother. You can't tell us what to do. I'm not going to change. What are you talking about?" And wasn't it even more like the? Oldest son cares of everything, and so it was even more like. Mm. It's almost like a slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was typically, yeah, the older one inherited everything you name and everything. But, so, the next verses we're going to read, I call them the forgotten verses. Nephi is trying to talk to Laman and Lemuel and trying to remind them of the experiences they had in the past. So, let's read these. We're going to start in verse 10. Now, read it to yourself. 
and tell me, what does Nephi try to remind them, what, what experience does he try to remind them of? Okay. Yes. When, after they tried to get the plates, and then they couldn't, and then they gave away all the whiskey, and then they got mad, so they started beating them, and Sam, and then Nathan came. That's exactly right. Well, and when they got off the plates, they were just covered up the whiskey. Yeah. Great, great. So, the first experience is Nephi saying, Laman, Lemuel, you, have you forgotten that you saw an angel? Okay, next verse. Like, yeah, so what? <laughs> See an angel every day. Okay, well, what's the next verse? Next, uh, verse 11. What does he say they've forgotten? <laughs> exactly. Have you forgotten that Laban tried to kill us and God saved us? Have you already forgotten that? I mean, it only happened last week. Well, it happened, but... Okay, a month. I know, honestly, it probably took them over a month to do all that. Okay, verse 12. What did they forget? What does Nephi say? The Lord didn't do all things according to his will. Exactly. Have you forgotten that God is faithful? That God will fulfill his promise to see that you are faithful to him? Have you already forgotten that? So what causes us to forget? How many of you have ever been in a testimony meeting or had a spiritual experience and say, I will never forget this moment? Maybe you do. I will never forget how I feel. Why do we forget? Why do we forget? If you read verse 9, Nephi tells us why they forget. unto the word of the Lord. Where do we find the word of the Lord? In the scriptures. You are not keeping God's commandments. You are not reading your scriptures every day. You are forgetting. As hard as it might seem, if you were to see an angel, you might think, Whoa, I will never forget that experience. I just saw an angel. I know it's true. If you were to stop reading your scriptures and stop keeping the commandments, you would forget. As hard as that may seem to believe, you would forget. If you continue reading your scriptures and continue keeping the commandments, you would never forget. In the scriptures, God says over and over, I will bring to your mind his word, or my word. I will help you remember things but only if you have the Spirit of the Lord with you. Only if you're keeping the commandments. Only if you're reading your scriptures. He will bring things to your mind that you have forgotten. And so, Laman and Lemuel stopped reading the word of the Lord and were forgetting. And that's what caused them to murmur. That was the difference between Sam, or sorry, Laman and Lemuel and Nephi. Nephi never forgot. What about Sam? Sam seemed to be a pretty good guy, too. He's kind of right there with Nephi. <laughs> In my eyes, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, let's move on. So, of course, when Nephi talked to them, Lane and Lemuel said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll repent. No problem. Right? Just like they always do. But they didn't. They didn't. What, did, what happened? What happened next? If we read, uh, let's see. So, Laman and Lemuel get upset. And then they, in verse 16, they tie up Nephi. And beat him with sticks. Uh, it doesn't say they beat him, but they tie him up. And they thought to take away his life. And thought to take away his life. And they wanted to leave him. I mean, that's what brothers do all the time, right? Yeah, I should have snapped my little brother's neck off. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So he gets tied up, he gets left in the wilderness to die. And Nephi, what does Nephi do? He prays. Good job. Okay, let's read verse 17. Who can read verse 17 for me? Oh, nine to 17. But it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, according to my faith which is in thee, wilt thou deliver me from the hands of my brethren, yea, even give me strength that I might first these bands with which I am bound. Okay. So what was his prayer like? Was it Oh yeah, he was bound on the ship. He was bound on the ship also. He got bound a lot. Yeah. Brothers <laughs> didn't like him too much. They didn't like him at all. <laughs> they didn't like him at all. Well it depends on what what mood they were in. So, how specific was Nephi's prayer? Very. Very specific, right? Isn't that interesting? He didn't just say, God, I'm in trouble, help me out. He specifically said, God, give me strength to burst these bands. How many of us, when we go to school, say, God, please help me in school today? It's pretty broad, aren't we? Help me not fail this math test. When we get more specific, God can bless us more specifically. I think that was interesting. When I was reading this, I never realized that before, how specific he really was. This is something that Elder Bednar said. He said, it is especially interesting to me that Nephi did not pray to have his circumstances changed. Rather, he prayed for the strength to change the circumstances. So think about that for a moment. He didn't pray to have his circumstances changed, but rather for the strength to change his circumstances. Okay? So if you're failing in a test, or there's a test coming up, do you pray and say, God, please cancel school? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. God, please yeah, yeah. cause an earthquake to destroy school. I'm done with it. He specifically prayed for something. So when you go to school, you say, God, I know school is there. I know I have to go to school. Please specifically help me with this test. You do your part. So the Lord burst the band, right? He was tied up, the bands were burst, and he was free. What did Nephi do after that? Did he say, okay, you got out of that one, give me your next, do something else, you know, I'm ready for you. No, he, he went back to his brothers and tried to talk to them again. Even though he knew that he was going to, probably to get tied up again, or maybe something worse. Nephi, I don't know, I'm always impressed with Nephi, he's one of my biggest heroes. He had no fear, he had no agenda. He just wanted to do God's will. That's all he ever wanted. So he goes back to his brothers and tries to talk to them again. And of course, Laman and Lemuel were upset again, right? And they're about ready to beat him up again. But who intervenes? Who comes in this Sam. time? Sam! <laughs> Sam. I wish. No, it doesn't ever mention Sam. I mean, I mean, verse 19. Tell me. Read it and then tell me. Who, who comes in? Good. One of the daughters of Ishmael? Her mother and the son of the family. Well, one of the sons of Ishmael, right? So one of the sons, one of the daughters and the mother are begging Laman and Laman, like, please, don't. So one of the sons of Ishmael, he was the one against Nephi in the beginning, so his heart changed. And it says one of the daughters, I don't know which daughter, um, but it could have been one against Nephi from the beginning as well. Her heart changed. And they went to Laman and Lemuel and begged them, please do not hurt me by, let's continue <coughs> our journey. And so, yes? Did Nephi have any sisters? You know, we're not told. I don't know. So, that's um, something we'll ask them when we get to the next world, right? <laughs> we're not told. So, so Laman and Lemuel listened to Nephi finally. They begged for forgiveness, and they continue on their journey. So, 
I'm running out of time, but what I wanted to leave with you today is when we liken the scriptures to ourselves, the, the point of scriptures, or the point of Nephi for me, you know, we have, we have destinations, right? We start here, and the point is to get here. Getting here is not the goal, okay? This is the goal. This is the trial. Getting to the Valley of Lemuel was not the trial. This is the testing ground right here for each of us. Getting through a trial, we all get through trials, but it's how do you get through the trial? That's the test. How many of you just want to say, just, I just can't wait till the day ends. I just want to get through this day. I'm done. I'm done with today. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> we all get through the day. We all do. The day will end for all of us. How oh, yes. you do react in the day is the test. That's the test. That's where you're being, where God is asking you to do things. That's where you need to have a good attitude. That's where you need to pray. It's not, I made it to the end of the day, I passed. No. How did you react throughout the day? How did you get to the end of the day? So, when I read the scriptures, that's what I get out of this journey of Nephi, going back and forth, back and forth, every single time, five times. Imagine getting in the car, Going to every state capital, Maine, five times. A lot. The test wasn't can you make it to Maine. The test was how did you make it to Maine? How did you do it? You know, the Book of Mormon is full of things like that. For me, the Book of Mormon has been my rock in my life. It is, you know, have you guys talked about the keystone, about the Book of Mormon being the keystone? It has literally been that for me. There's so many times in my life where I question things. Question when I when I went through a time of questioning in the church, the prophet. The one thing I could never question or doubt was that I knew that the Book of Mormon was true. And that's always kept me on the path of discipleship. So for each of you, and I've got to end already, but I just want to bear you my testimony that. I know the scriptures are true. The Book of Mormon especially is true. That if you apply these journeys, these examples of Nephi traveling back and forth, what he did, what he said, what kept him strong, the same thing will apply to you if you apply it in your life. And this I leave with you in the name of Jesus Christ.